Today is the 28th of September 2009 and I'm going to talk about the buckling of struts. And very often a structure collapses with disastrous consequences and the media says within 24 hours that the structure is buckled. But they don't know that because buckling is a complicated phenomenon and to work out whether the structure is buckled you might need an investigation that takes two years, not one day. Now a structural component under compression is called a strut and a structural component in tension is called a tie. Now a strut, a standard strut can buckle at a very small load compared with the same structure collapsing under tension. I will demonstrate this to you with this bendy beam here. I've got a bendy beam there, you can see it's initially out of straight. If I put it in tension, that means I'm pulling my arms outwards, the out of straightness decreases, and it's quite strong, it does not collapse. If I put it in compression, the out of straightness increases, and with a very small load, it collapses. That's known as buckling. So I'll explain that this is tension, a tie in tension, this is a strut in compression which buckles. This is the Lloyd tensile testing machine, which has a maximum load of 3 tons, and here we have a component a tensile specimen which we're going to collapse in tension. The length of the specimen between the holes is 125 millimeters, its width is 12.54 millimeters, and its thickness is 1.52 millimeters. This is the screen which displays the load extension relationship. The load is the vertical axis which goes up to a maximum value of 8,000 newtons, and the horizontal axis is extension which goes to a maximum extension of 30 millimeters. It's starting to load the specimen, and there you can see how the load goes up there. And it's going at twice the speed of sound to yield. And I'm going to look at the specimen. The vessel's under tension. It's going to clap shortly. Have, here we have the collapsed form of the load extension curve under tension. The maximum load is about 6,700 newtons, and the extension, maximum extension is about 18 millimeters. There is the vessel just fractured under tension. So, this is the specimen we're going to test in compression to demonstrate buckling. We're going to turn it to 90 degrees so you can see the mode failure easily. Here we have the load extension relationship, the maximum load in the vertical axis which is 8,000 newtons and the horizontal axis is an extension or in this case compression which is 30 millimeters. So we're going to load it now. See how it's going over? It's such a low load. This is what we call buckling. Oh, it's, just, it's zigzagging there a bit. That's for initial settlement but the load is very small and it's collapsing. There's the specimen buckle very badly. Plastic buckling. Now the classical theory for buckling is called the Euler theory, but that's for elastic struts. This buckle plastically, and therefore the theory that applies to this is the ranking golden theory, but this must also allow for initial imperfections of the strut. So there we have the two specimens that we've just tested the destruction. The slender member on the left was a tie in tension, and the slender member on the right was a strut in compression. You can see from the experiment that the same specimen collapsed at a third of the load in compression than it did in tension. We're going to test another member in compression to show the initiation of buckling. Right off we go. There's buckling, it's starting to buckle. It's buckled plastically. And there is the curve showing the buckling. And there is the buckle. It's buckled the other way this time. I can't be sure which way it's going to buckle. It goes by the initial imperfections. In this case, the, the member buckled at a slightly higher load, about 3,200, about half the load, which caused the same structure to collapse the tension.